Hey there game makers and welcome back to a must known video basics tutorial about the fancy terms of scope and encapsulation. So if you just want to have the TLDR because you maybe don't want to watch the whole video, scope just means the accessibility of code. Most of the time it's just, you know, variables, their values and things which can be uh, split up in three groups which are in scope uh, normal, so the default instance variables then local, which are used most of the time in scripts or in functions, and then the global ones, which are one time set, and then it sticks in memory, even though, for example, the instance which created it is it's long gone, but that stuff stays around until the game is done. And the second is encapsulation, because that plays part in, uh, well, who can access what, and then it's just the idea of bundling things into a unit in Java, it's classes and the methods, slash functions and game makes just basically objects and functions um, where you bundle stuff together you could consider a shader as well um, well encapsulated because it has uh, values in there like variables and then also functionalities so it's just you know bundling stuff together so that's pretty much uh, what it's doing and then the idea behind the encapsulation is to bundle stuff to hide it so for example java is more hiding stuff Game back is more less restrictive in this kind of regard and to separate internal and external code very important to understand that concept but of course if you want to go a little bit more into detail then stick around this is one up indie i am a developer so if you like what you're seeing and hearing then why not consider sharing and liking and subscribing to the channel of course Alrighty, so once again you see a little bit of gameplay and what you see is a bunch of instances and basically they're just doing their thing um, you know and just checking to the other ones like saying like hey what kind of position you're having are we colliding what are you doing on next Tuesday and all that stuff you know the, the regular stuff and then we just go and check in a quick and dirty approach how that actually looks like under the hood and how it is structured at least for game maker and these once again are two interlocked concepts which are super important to understand scope and encapsulation so let's go into game maker really really quickly so normally what you do is let's say i have an object it's called object enemy and we just face plant them in the room and then they are kind of an encapsulated bunch of things which are just you know being thrown in and then each instance has, I don't know, tons of events inbuilt. So these, this is kind of the functionality. And then for example, if you have a create event, you will, you can create your own variables in there. Or for example, the internal ones, which are marked as green, which you can read and uh, well override. So basically they're values, but you kind of delete them. Um, they're kind of all, they're shipped in, whether you like it or not. And that's for, therefore they're called instance variables. They're kind of reserved, so these words or this word com these words combinations are reserved. And of course, you can create your own ones, which I don't know, it's just you know some text, and then equal to to some value, and then this is considered a, a variable. And therefore, there are three kind of scopes to it. And the scope just you know says like, hey, who can access it, and who cannot. So for example, just for disclaimers, this one is local, and local means it is just locally be usable. So let's say um, in this create event or in any other event, if you would, for example, do something like this, this thing is gone after the event is over. So it stores something in memory, you know, a variable name, and then set it to a value, and then it's getting flushed from memory instantly after that. And that is being declared with the var keyword. If you, for example, let that out, then it's considered a normal variable and normal variables, this is the, sco the scope here, the first one, they exist inside the instance. And let's say this dude can access all the instance variables of the other ones. So this could be the ones which you create. So for example, the, the health points or the internal ones, which are, I don't know, for example, you know, spread index, the position, if it's visible, blah, 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 all that stuff. So um, game makers, kind of non-restrictive which is kind of nice and then each one can check out the other one if they want to so this is the idea and that everybody can access have access to everybody else therefore are um, objects kind of the controllers of the whole game maker 
engine. Alrighty, but let's go uh, back to that. So here, once again, bluish color could be a number or text. So the bluish color is just signifying it's, it's a normal instance variable. So the one which you create in the creative and then, then the idea is that you can use it and abuse it all the time. It's kind of getting updated and therefore it stays relevant. And then if you change it, for example, the hit points, then it makes sense to have, you know, a variable here. But what about, let's uh, skip this one here because it has a few more implications. But what about the global ones? These are kind of wonky because once you create them, so let's say, uh, if you don't have this, then it would be a normal variable. But if you use the keyword global, it means that you are creating in memory permanently until the game is getting closed. Uh, this variable, which is called music volume, or for example, uh, and set it to a value, you can of course change it each time. But for example, if you would get rid of all the instances, so if you just boink, 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 and all that gone, still the global variables are in memory this is important to understand so here they are to stick around uh well until the game is getting you know if until the game's getting closed so here what are, what is this good for well it's not good for let's say internal let's say for, for the enemy for example for the health pool because now they would be having one variable which has the same name and then that would be conflicting uh, it would be not unique it would be a set for all three which would make no sense and therefore global variables are for more or less uh, static values which are getting maybe updated but they are just you know be used for one specific purpose at all so that could be volume i don't know colors and whatever but if, if, if you for example want to go a little bit more fancy you can have even global variables which are called macro i actually never seen anybody use it but hey um, this is how you structure it. You don't have even an equal sign, not even here. This dude here. This is a constant global variable which you set once in any you know instance, whatever you which you put in room, and then it once it is set, you can never change the value again. Same for idoms. This is kind of a list collection of things, and these constant values make sense for things which you don't change. So for example, you don't change your company name, you know, every week. So it makes sense uh, just to have enums or maybe macro. And therefore these things are, well, you can read from them, but you cannot rewrite them once they are set. So this is the idea behind that. But let's go to the really specific case. And this is where encapsulation comes a little bit more in place. So let's say, um, you want to access those variables which are you know the regular ones no problem this ones which are being shipped with the um, instance also no problem easy peasy but here this one this one is not accessible from one instance to the other therefore it's in scope it's local it's even that restrictive that for example it you can just for example use it only in this event and even it can be even more restrictive so let's say that you have a function and therefore this is the thing where this encapsulation even restricted even further so let's say you have as you can see the variable it's called chance here so here function then you just i don't know for a critical role and you just input a name here it will be always yellow and yellow is the color of temporal variables so local ones the idea is that, for example, once you call the function, I don't know, this critical, here we go, and then you just input the value, oh, it must be a number, then, then it would tell you, like, um, I don't know, if, if this is a critical role because it's returning a value. So here, once you call this thing, uh, variables are, are being created, so is crit and role and blah, 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 and once this thing is over, all this stuff is getting flushed from memory because you don't need it. This is the really important part and this is where encapsulation plays part so these or for example this variable if you for example i don't know input it here it should be you know yellow but it's not because it's encapsulated in well this capsule or in this thing and therefore it is only valid and readable inside here so this is really important to understand so for scripts and for functions local variables can be even more restricted just you know to those brackets and nobody else outside of it can read it. Alrighty, so hopefully that made sense for you. So once again, quick recap, um, three kind of scopes, normal, which needs no keyword in blue. Then the second one, which is 
with the var or for example in functions um, where are you um, well here or for example here declared local just local inside uh, wherever it's it, it's scoped so basically the scope inside here and then the last one global one time set which could be you know to be uh, you know changed later on or if you want to be super fancy with enums or macro to be one time set and never to be changed again for super static uh, constants which are never to be changed ever ever again but of course you can read Alrighty, hopefully that was of interest to you and see you in the next one. Have a good one. One up indie.